And there we go. That looks good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. That'll do, pig. That'll do, port. And now I need to, need to translate in the down direction. Poof, poof, poof. Make sure I'm still good in this direction. Me, we can fix it a little bit. There we go. Wait for the magnets to kick in. There's that magnets. Thunk! And that is what I wanted. Look at that. <laughs> Apparently it'll be resting on my RCS modules. Hopefully we don't blow those off, but whatever. Stop calling me. <laughs> Who are you calling Shirley? Shirley. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, never call me Shirley. <laughs> you just landed left back at Kerbin? Regardless of the exact ASL you landed at, look behind you. I am glad you safely landed back at Kerbin. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do we have a uh, clearance, Clarence? <laughs> clearance, Clarence. What's your vector, Victor? That's uh, Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? <laughs> what is that from? Uh, airplane. Airplane. 1980. That is old school. <laughs> so just pumping this fuel out to put it down in these tanks. Ooh, 13.8. Dust, that's not dry. Whatever. <laughs> Why is it not exactly dry? I put a little bit too much in the space plane. Now the good news is we've got RTGs on the space plane, and we can actually fire up this thing anytime we need to. I guess the guys are going to ride like this, huh? This is... I wonder if... Th I hope this works. F5 for great safety. Buck 25 on that. We're going to go ahead and turn all the engines on the plane off, which I actually didn't have a key for. Did I? Did I have a key for that? Zero? Yes, zero worked. Okay, good deal. And it's missing a little bit of fuel from somewhere. Ah, because it's counting the plane. The fuel tankage on the plane, because we've got two docking ports, it would actually want to try and feed fuel through those docking ports. Don't mind the Kerbals as they try to w go through there. There is actually electricity lines, fuel lines, RCS lines. <laughs> it's very tight space. All right, oxidizer, liquid fuel. Let's do disable crossfeed. There we go, stage only. That does nothing. Is this stage only thing ever going to get fixed? Look at that, guys. With the plane on board, we've got 5710 meters per second of delta V here. Uh, anything else I can take off? I could take these off. I don't need to, though. These are full. Yeah, we're not going to. I think we're going to be good to go here. And I did not have fuel in these front tanks, did I? Excellente. So, the scene. Oh, nice. <laughs> the scene in question. Nice. <laughs> He was funny. RCS might be a problem. You mean having RCS turned on? Typing R into the chat window like this does not turn off your RCS DOS. <laughs> so let's see here. We've got that. We've got that. We've got this. That's just RCS storage down there if it's off center. Yeah. We got to take care of. But remember. Let's go plan them. Let's go plan a maneuver, y'all. Wow, I really need to get that mod. Here's what I need to do. I need to come over here. I need to set up my browser window so that I have Alex Moon's wonderful calculator. Alex Moon. You know I'm going to be asking for somebody to put a link. Alex Moon KSP. You don't have that bookmarked? It's faster to type in Alex Moon KSP. Noob. <laughs> because cl cl clicking on bookmark and expanding my streaming bookmarks. Da 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 da, right? Uh -huh. All right, so this is set up, and I need to put it in the front of the window so I don't stream my email or anything like that. There we go. Let me close this. Let me close that. I'm just going to put all your radiators on two, so we do the crafter docked. Two toggles them all. That's actually a really good idea, Mitsu. That is an excellent, an excellent idea. To always, between different crafts, have like a standard... Uh, yeah, just have a standard number for all your yeah, toggles. For all the I will say, though, if you, uh, for example, have all of your solar panels on one off and then all your solar panels on one on and then you dock them and then you try to use that button it, it just alternates between <laughs> the two they don't all <laughs> so you have all to manually to all going on uh, yeah. you kind of have to manually tweak it i guess yeah uh -huh. it'd be annoying if they have a obnoxious amount of panels all right i think i'm good here so let's go ahead and let me see if the browser window screen is going to work i wish there was a way to preview it before i put it live browser window Window is minimized. Okay, well, it'll work, I guess. That's the ship tunes window. There's that. Does it look right? Interesting. That window's not minimized. Oh, brother. I've broken it again. Apparently, I have a little bit of keythane around me as well. Whatever. Oh, da, 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 da. Browser window. Chrome cap. 
Fine, we'll do a new one. Let me fix this up for us so y'all can see the transfer calculator. I'm so bad, DK. <laughs> I'm so bad. It's a freaking new window capture, launch window planner. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Hey, get bigger. There we go. And then get behind me. Order send to bottom. Aha! DOS in a browser window. Excellent. So, <laughs> good job. We're going to compute a transfer out to Jewel. They don't do it for engines. Eh, okay, let's go ahead and compute this transfer, right? So we need to go to KSP. I'm just going to do it for you. And I'm going to see what my current date is. Year 1, day 5. I just started this. Wow, that's actually pretty cool. Year 1, day 5. Protractor 2. Oh, really? Dude, Adel, does he ever come on to Twitch? Because if you wanted to talk about Protractor 2 in stream, you know, maybe. <laughs> um, No, no worries with the shout out there. All these really cool tools, I have no problems with people doing total shout outs to that. Because the, the guys that spend the work on the time to work on it, especially with no guarantee of compensation or anything like that, I appreciate all the freaking mods. That's an interesting thing. Why does it say my target was going away at a rapid speed? <laughs> DOS with my own personal Keithane aura. <laughs> All right, y'all. I am in this window over here. Today is year one, day five. So the first thing I do in my browser window is go from year one, day five. Right like that. Basically the beginning of the save. That's how it took us five days to build the orbital hold. So anyways, we are going from Kerbin, which is our origin. We are going to go out to Jewel, the home of Lath. We're currently in a 125 kilometer orbit, so I type 125 right there. That didn't change the scene, did it? No, it did not. Excellent. And then, I am going to say that I want an arrow capture on the way in, which should be good. We scroll on down, we click plot it, and Alex Moon Moon's wonderful script tells us the best time to go. Wow, 1984. If we want to wait until year two, day 254, we can get out there for 1954, 1999. I don't know. Is it trying to give us an inter interplanetary transfer or sell us a used car? <laughs> That's a good year. <laughs> I use that. Do I say that too much, stream? I, I do say that anytime I see 999 or 995. I'm like, really? But here's how you use this, right? If you've never used this before, it's computed the best transfer window for us. It's a pork chop plot. It's kind of a heat map sort of pork chop plot. And it's telling us that when I'm in this blue right here, I'm 1988, 1944. It actually put it right on the best thing, which was 19, 1984. But we can use this if we're impatient. We can actually scroll around and find something that won't cost us too much more delta V. Do I want to go to where it's red? No, I don't. That's terrible. 13,000 delta V? Uh -uh. Do I want to go where it's yellow? No, that's 8,000. As the, no, as the colors get cooler, that means that it costs us less delta V. As the graph goes down, that means that our time of flight, see time of flight days on the side, this will be a quicker trip down here at the bottom. Good to know. And then out here, this is the departure date. This is how long into the future we're going to have to wait. So what you can do if you have a craft, you can actually figure out what your budget is, and you can move around this and find something that fits your budget. I'm actually going to look down here because I would like a really short trip, and I would like under 2500 delta v so all in this blue place 2452 2510 that's really not getting us there any sooner though 2519 what is that time of flight one year 142 days what is this over here one year 142 days so we're all along that same line just with different delta v's with different departure dates what is this one year 138 days for 23 that looks really good. Now, if I were to select something up here, I could do it for 2,000, but my time of flight, I'm seeing it right over here, right? My time of flight, if I select it up here, come on now. Three years, 376 days for 2083. So is it better to spend 2083 and get there after four years, basically, or go down to the bottom here, spend a little tiny bit more Delta V, but get there in under half the time? That's how this plot works. It's really easy to, to look at and kind of understand what's going on. Remember the numbers we need to write down. The numbers, trusty dusty pilot G2 here. Um, here's the numbers we need to write down. I first need to write down the date of departure. This is important for me. Year one, 
Day 189. Excellent. I also need to write down the ejection angle. This is the second important thing. 113 to prograde. I also need to click on this and write down the component parts of the transfer, the node basically. Ejection delta V, 2225, 2225, prograde, normal, 565, 565, normal. And I've wrote it, I've written it down, I actually, I don't know if it'll focus on that. Does it actually focus on that? Nope, it green screens it. <laughs> Will it not green screen the text? No. I can totally, it's like a cloaking device I've got going on. Anyways, apparently this yellow note card is the same color as my green screen. I don't know how that works, but uh, anyways, oh, I need to duck a little bit apparently so you can see the numbers. <laughs> 2225 prograde, 565 normal. Those things are important. All right. The last thing, let's plan this node without using precise node, right? We need, let's see here, we need this. We need the total delta V, I need to get out of the way. The total delta V, 2296. So I'm going to write that down as well. 2296. And I'll show you how to plan a node that has both of these component parts, right? 2225 prograde, 565 normal. And do that without using precise node. Precise node would make it really easy. You just type those numbers in, right? But without using precise node, we can still do it. Let's go back to Kerbal Space Programme. Kerbal Space Program. Excellent. There you go. All right. So I'm actually really interested to see you do this without precise node. Oh. I've never tried it. Oh yeah, no, it's uh, it's basically you know all the variables except one, and so you can set up the third thing. That's why I wrote down the total delta v. Oh because yeah. Because if I know the sense. prograde and I know the total, then I can burn normal until yeah. you know the unknown variable makes the total number correct. It's just solving an equation. Let's see here. I don't really need to plan this node right now. <laughs> I need to go out to year. Wow, chat's going crazy. <laughs> there they're talking about uh, protractor mod. There's one that it's uh, it's basically Alex Moon's thing, but in game. So that's I need to install moment. that. I do need to install that. I have heard that that is very cool in game, and I totally appreciate that, Adel. Let's see what we've got going on here. We need to wait. Basically, we need to wait until year one, day 189. So what can I do? Kerbal alarm clock. Add raw time alarm. That's this little guy right here, and I can actually say wait till a specific date. Year two, right? Year one, day 189. Let me just confirm something right quick. Departure. Year one, day 189. Okay, that's fine. So year one, day 189. Hour, I don't even care. Zero, minutes, zero, whatever. This isn't really that important because we're doing an interplanetary, interplanetary transfer that we're going to do live, basically. So add an alarm. That's going to allow us to warp. How far in the fast? 183 days into the future. So let us go over to the Space Center. Because those things won't hit each other if we're at the Space Center. Let's... Oh, no. And we're crashed. <laughs> we game cannot... crashed? Yeah, game's crashing. Game's yeah, got an boom. issue. Uh -huh. Because check it out. When I press that and go to the Space Center, I cannot do anything. That is a major problem. Hey, F5 for safety. I am going to have to. There's nothing I can do. There's not going to be anything that I can do. Um, <laughs> let me try to switch to a different ship. Nope. It totally crashed the game. I cannot go. So I'm going to have to be right back. While we reload this, let's do something interesting here. Technical difficulties. Fader. Dude. Again, thank you so much for hanging out, man. You have to go to bed, otherwise you're going to be in sleep deprivation? I don't know what that is, man, but I hope you don't get it. Sleep deprivation. Depraved sleep? <laughs> Let's go ahead, and I'm going to have to kill you know what, the name. You don't know what sleep deprivation is? Look at the spelling. <laughs> oh, it's sleep deprivation. Yes, there you go. All right, I'm going <laughs> to have to... Like, like, oh, oh, come on, man. <laughs> I know. You, you can... You First could hand. like pilot a rocket to the moon, but uh... <laughs> I don't know what sleep deprivation. But is. them no, no, no. words, them words is just hard sometimes. <laughs> it's a spelling joke. A spelling joke. Let me go ahead and uh, I'm actually no, going to really have messed. to kill the game. I did Alt F5 or I did say F5 for safety. There goes the game. F5 for safety. Let me see how this works. I tried a new thing. 
Yes! Excellent. I edited the key thing off the edges of my screen, but there is a small green line. Maybe you can figure out how I did this. <laughs> oh my gosh. By reloading to a quick save, it doesn't always work. Uh, I just actually went ahead and killed the game. It's probably time for a restart anyways. There's that right-click bug <laughs> to the desktop. Omaron. Whoa, I missed somebody. Omaron 333. I don't know if you're still here, buddy, but... uh. Wow. Game Informer and Max Maps. Take a look at 0.25. That's actually pretty cool. Hmm. Uh, yes. You can totally modify my computer. KSP. I was named 215. Jeez. Guys, we're going to get this out to Lathe. And then I believe I am going to call it after we get to Lathe. Alt F2 will probably... Yeah, Mr. Bond, you're right. The Curse of Null Riff Areas. You are probably absolutely right there. Let me actually look at the chat here. And make sure that I've got everything going. Uh, land of, okay, I've seen that. I definitely saw that. There's the scene. Okay, good, 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 good. Seven. Oh, yeah. Eh. Mr. Bond, that's not a bad idea. Seven for all open and eight for all closed. You could also do that uh, extended nat. Or what is it? Extended action groups, right? Diurn. Yeah, I love that mod. Thanks for joining Kerbal Space Academy. We are streaming. How to get to Lathe at this point. We've done a lot of stuff. We started with building an SSTO space plane. We went on to rendezvous and docking with the station. We went on to building an interplanetary kicker stage in the VAB to get our space plane out to Lathe, and now we're doing interplanetary transfers. That game is loading up. Nobody really wants to... It's almost better to like have something besides the space center behind me, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. I am planning next week um, to go ahead and order an actual green screen. Apparently this green screen is not the right color at all. It's way too light. Like, way too light green, I guess. And so it I blends into white colors too easily. And I am going to order an actual green screen to put behind me. Because this right here, Walmart material. <laughs> yeah, you told me that. $4.88. Which is, almost, I mean, it's really honestly a testament to OBS. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's not going to be the green screen that's going to be expensive. It's going to be the uh, actual, like, mounting mechanism that can be. I think um, I'm good to go on mounting mechanisms. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. I spent a lot of time with people who were rambling wrecks from Georgia Techs. And some of the hell of an engineer rubbed off on me. <laughs> if there's any GT fans out there. I spent a lot of time. Some of my best friends went to Georgia Tech when I was in Atlanta. So let's see here. Resume save. Go back to the space station save. And hope that we are good. KSA space stations. Look at all these. I'm beginning to lose what's in each save. <laughs> I've got so many KSA saves. I really need to clean it up at some point. We'll have like a instructor work day or something where I just need to get my act together and not stream for one day. <laughs> <laughs> just organize yourself. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go back out there. I wonder what that craft ended up being called. Who won the fight in the name the craft thing? Dust. Go dogs. Uh-oh. <laughs> Go dogs! Nice look behind you. <laughs> Let's see here. I won't say that I would cheer for Georgia Tech, but a bunch of my people would. Not so spaceless plane. He's not near the hotel though. Oh, that's the guy we need to rescue. <laughs> there we go. There's the lame duck, aka you can take this guy from me. Maybe we should rename that guy. <laughs> it's called You Can Take the Sky From yes. Me? Yes. We couldn't get it flying, so we named it You Can Take the Sky From Me. Can I hum copyrighted material? <laughs> <laughs> Not sure what the rules are on that. I don't even think that it would be close enough for any sort of automated system to pick it up as anywhere near the original. <laughs> it's really the spirit of the thing. All right. And we're still in the space station. We are good to go. Have we pumped everything? Yes. Have we got this done? Yes. Have we? All right. So I just wanted to check in and make sure it was still good to go. So we didn't have any surprises when we came upon this. Thanks for sticking with me through the reboot there. Let me see. <laughs> you should say you're welcome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. Back to the Space Center. We're going to warp from the Space Center up to that alarm that we had in 183 days from now. Let's watch the Kerbal Orrery. Go around. Is that my friend say Ori? Ori? It's got an extra ER in there, I think. You know the thing with the planets going around each other? Uh, like what? Like you have to fix in Skyrim? No? Anyone? What are you talking about? 
Ori! That's the word, right? I don't know how to... Somebody can check it out. Teflon Mike also. By the way, Teflon Mike, hi. I don't think I gave you a shout out earlier when you came in. I have been bad, bad, bad at checking the chat. Anyways, let's go ahead into maximum time warp. 1,000, 100,000 X. And we will burn through these days with the quickness. That's the, the planet's going around the sun. It's called an orrery. Let me go look that up. I'm pretty sure. Orrery. Orrery for sale. That's that's a good sign. Orrery. Yeah! Hm. There you go. Orrery. Wikipedia. So these are some images. I even spelled it right the first time. Here, enjoy this Wikipedia article. Just to prove that I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, no, orrery. Orrery. Alright, okay, orrery. Yeah, got it. I mean, nice. is it or or is it re? I, it's it's orrery. Like oh. a mobile, yeah, it's basically like a mobile. Um, But it's cool because it's got planets. Oh, I'm still set to overlay. Thank you, we're not even watching this. You got to see nothing of the Kerbal Orrery. Oh, I didn't realize you were even up yet. I would have said something. So bad, so bad. Uh, that's why I need another monitor so I can see my stream on one side and I'll see when I make stupid mistakes. Yeah, I forget mistakes. that you only like, get one monitor, too. You're monitor. I'm still working on the donation monitor fund, man. For being such a like good streamer, you're kind of a noob. I am kind of a noob. I'm kind of a not very <laughs> affluent noob is maybe the way we should put that. Yeah. <laughs> but I've got the fun going. It'll get there. It'll get there. I mean, it's kind of charming in a way, but... <laughs> it's endearing? <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at him. He's so cute. All right, here we are at the correct day. Day one, year one, day 189. What we need to do, the next number that's important to me is 113 degree to prograde. What we do, remember we wrote that down. We find Kerbal's orbit. The sun is there. Kerbal orbits to the right. Ter Kerbin orbits to the right like this. That means that if we zoom in and we rotate around in space, this way is forward. Oh, come on. There you go. This way is forward, all right? This way is back. From my current orientation of the camera, when I zoom in, it won't change the orientation along the, orient, uh, along the orbit. But forward prograde, that right there is zero degrees. This out directly away from the sun, 90 degrees. Directly back, 180 degrees. The calculator told us that we need to put our burn node at 113 degrees to prograde. So this being 90, 113 degrees is going to be kind of back in here. That would not be it, but it would be kind of back in this area, and we can just guess Because we are going to go back here Oh, buddy. I'm not even in the right screen where I can do this. Noob <laughs> See, I actually have to go to the ship as it turns out Before I can click and add a node Base condo module Kerbal clone cannon easy peasy Kerbal clone cannon easy peasy there we go, wow. Look how far off, in 183 days, here is the space hotel, there is where we are now. Just that little bitty difference in orbits that we had put us that far off after 189 days. Orbits get out of whack in a hurry, not gonna lie. Let's go ahead and go- I don't know that 189 days is a hurry, but I get what you mean. Well, you know, relatively. It's all relative. <laughs> yeah, it's all relative. I'm just giving you a wrap. Like yeah. one half of a birthday, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you're, th when you're talking cosmically, I guess, uh... The Mage Quest! Thank you! Yes! When you have to go to the Dwimmer City and you have to go fix the or... Come on, now! <laughs> Man, I've played the crap out of Skyrim and I don't remember that at all. You don't? Oh. <sighs> oh my I guess gosh. I'm not usually a mage, though. Let's see here. Where is... Uh, I'm a I think I'm everything. <laughs> I'm like, yes, complete all the quests. <laughs> I want to be an expert thief, tank, mage, archer, sneak, thief. <laughs> Two thieves? I don't even know. I'm going to pick your pocket and then go tank a freaking... <laughs> all right, anyways. Focus, focus. Now I'm on this craft. M. 113 to, pro to prograde. Zoom out. Put Kerbin like that. Kerbin orbits in this direction. Come this way. We're coming up behind her. Zoom up to it. Woo! doesn't matter what our orbit is, it matters what Kerbin's orbit is. And what I want to do, this away from the sun, right? Away from the sun being 90 degrees, I want to set 113 degrees. So what we can do is click over here where we think that's going to be. I'm just going to guess right there. Precise node, I said I'm not going to use it to plan the node, so I'm going to turn it off. I am going to turn it back on to see how close to 113 degrees I got. <laughs> Mage is 50. Nice. 
All right, let's see here. I'm gonna guess that that's about 113 degrees to prograde. Straight forward being zero, straight away from the sun being 90. That may be 113, I don't know. Let's go ahead and put together our node. What I wanted to do was understand that we needed 225 to prograde, right? So I'm gonna click on my node. I wrote that down, it was 225 to prograde in 565 normal. This green guy right here, he's prograde. We're going to pull on him until that little number right there says 2225. Lots and lots of prograde. 2225. There's a thousand. There's 2000. 2225. 2241. Check this out. If you pull it back in, it actually gives you a little bit finer control. Instead of pulling this, you can actually pull this guy backwards, and that is the fine control mode. 2222. A little bit more. And just the same, if I pull this guy in, that's fine control to prograde, right? So 2225. Let's go ahead and put it back just a little bit, using that little fine control. I don't know if a lot of people know that, that pulling the opposite node in is fine control for this one, the opposite one being pulled out. So this is prograde course control. Pulling retrograde inwards is prograde fine control. Pretty cool, actually. So we've got that. 2251. Well, I should actually probably put that in my video, I don't know that I... Happy to help. And yeah. I, am I streaming the right yeah, thing? Yeah. yeah, there you go. Actually, that's, you know that's you know what I'm gonna do that actually. I'm going to actually uh, send you my script before I yeah. record it. And see if you have any. Uh, Good deal, dude. Yeah, I'll be happy to help. Ideas or yeah. I will totally be happy to help. Scripts. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Just kind of sit here and talk at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you sir are far more organized than I am. So. We've got 2225 to prograde. I pulled the prograde thing all the way out. I used the retrograde, the anti-retrograde, right? Which is fine control for prograde by pulling it in. And now I need to do 565 to normal. I'm not gonna get a counter. There's nothing that's gonna tell me what 565 to normal is, right? What I can do, remember, my total burn was 2299. So I can actually come over here on the normal side and I can start pulling normal until this total right here becomes 2259. So let's see how that works. 2259, 2295, or 22. What did I write down? Let me make sure I wrote down the right thing. <laughs> ah, da, 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 da. 2295. There we go. 2295. So I'm just going to pull normal until the total there is 2295. Kuswa, thank you for the follow, dude. We're doing Kerbal Space Academy. We're setting up an interplanetary transfer, talking about it while we do it. Showing that it's really not that difficult. 2295, right like that. So what did that mean? We needed 565 to normal. Let's consult the oracle over here in precise node. I'll bring it to the middle of the screen. The precise node says we've got 2225 to prograde, and we needed 565. I've actually got 563 normal. Ding! That's actually pretty close for not having precise node. Now, if we were in precise node, what could we do? I could also, I could go ahead and drag these things like we were doing if I didn't have precise node, but if I had precise node, I could actually just come over here and say, do, 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 five, and that puts it into for me without all that dragging around. Here, I could actually put in 565, and it will type that out. In fact, if you get the exact numbers from your orbit in Kerbal Space Program, you can type the exact numbers into the calculator, and then you can type the exact numbers here into precise node, and it will give you an exact transfer. You can actually put in... I don't even know what the units are, the bazilla seconds or whatever, over here in the UT seconds. You can type in the exact time that it wants you to do that, and just type the numbers in and then go execute the burn. So, in order to do that you have to get your exact orbital requirements. I think the, uh, what's the most important part? It is the axis of something or other. The axis of ascending node or something, I can't remember what it is. It's not ascending node. But this here is telling me that uh, the ejection angle is 119.7, and I wanted 113. So I got pretty close, pretty close guess to 113. Let's go ahead and click on this, and using Precise Node, who tells me what my ejection angle is, go ahead and drag that forward until it says 113. Come on, girly, don't do me that way. Really? Seriously? Why is it so bouncy? 113.16. Ding! That looks good as well. So the next thing is... <laughs> Spoiler alert, look at the screen. Did I get a jewel encounter? Looks like I got a jewel encounter because that green periaps node way the heck out there, that would be a jewel encounter. So all we had to do, we went over to the calculator. It wasn't one, two, 
three, four. Really, one, two, three, four numbers that we wrote down in the calculator. Just understanding what those four numbers mean. I mean, I know that calculator, right? I'll go back to it. It looks really intimidating. Browser window. There we go. This calculator, ah, drowning in keythane, it looks like. Whatever. The browser window looks really intimidating whenever you're trying to use the calculator, but guys, there's only four numbers here that are important. The rest of you is you basically shopping for what you want. You type the right stuff into here. Kerbin to Jewel, 125, arrow breaking at Jewel, arrow capture at Jewel. Put it into the current day, year one, day five. No big deal, right? You can type those things in. It's not hard to select Jewel from a list. It's not hard to type in what your current orbit is, right? No big deal. Scroll it down. We shopped for the transfer we wanted. We decided on a very fast transfer sooner as opposed to a more efficient transfer later. And we wrote down four numbers. We wrote down the departure day. We wrote down the ejection angle. We wrote down the ejection delta V. In fact, the component parts of the ejection delta V. 2225.3, 565.2. And then we wrote down the total delta V, right? In case we didn't have a precise node. With those four or five, depending on if you're running precise node, with those bits of information, we set up on our first try, back to KSP, on our first try, right there, a jewel encounter. It's four numbers. It's like, geez, I don't even know what this number is. What does it mean? It's only four things that are important. I know I'm hammering it into your head, but so many people are like, oh my gosh, I can never do an encounter. I can never get out on interplanetary. I'm trying to, I hope I, if there's questions about it, ask me. Totally ask me questions if there's anything else I need to do. What? <laughs> Atlas going off on geometry in chat, it looks like. <laughs> Somebody asked what normal was, and uh, he's just answering me. Nice. Alex509 also got has my back there. Das overlay camera set to me. Thank you for getting my back, Alex. I really need some sort of like shock thing where people can type things into chat, and it actually makes a, a light appear over here to really get my attention. <laughs> Adel, there you go. What is normal? <laughs> I ask myself that all the time. What is normal? Ah, Freud, dude, that was a good question. Um, I will go back over here. That was the date of departure. So that wasn't the time elapsed until departure. Let me go back to the, not that, the browser window. Ah, that was a good place for it to freeze. The browser window, you can actually see that that is the departure date, year one, day 189. It's not the time until departure. It doesn't mean you wait one year and 189 days. It means go forward until today is the first year the 189th day. So that was a good question, man. Um, always remember to put a question or something in there while we, uh, so I can make sure I find those things. But yeah, there you go. It wasn't a year and 889 from today. It's year one, day 189. Hex chat, IRC claim. Spartan, if you could send me a link to that, man, I would never remember those things, but uh, that would be really cool. I need I need tools like that. I need tools like that. So, oh my gosh, the keythane's getting worse. The keythane in my chat window is real. <laughs> Why is it doing that? That's weird. All right, let's go out and do this burn, y'all. The keythane is not so bad here. It just looks like I I'm full of stars. <laughs> I was trying to see if I could get some stars in my mouth, and then somebody could say, "Oh my God, it's full of stars," and that would be a a reference. But anyways, let's go ahead and do this burn, y'all. It is coming up in 13 minutes. Hmm, okay, time to do that. Oh, never seen that before. That's a little bit weird. FI for safety now that we've got the node plan. I really, 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 really hope this works. What are we controlling from, by the way? Oh, this is very important. I'm actually going to right-click on the bottom docking port here. No, 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 no. Right-click from the bottom docking port. I could also right-click on the probe core there. And control from there, I would not want to be pointing, controlling from the space plane hangar, whatever that thing is. Place where pilots sit in the space plane, right? I would not want to be going from there. I want to control from something that is along the axis that we can burn, which is our engines here. So, all I did was I right-clicked on that docking port. I did control from here. Wow, that torque. We better turn this torque off, honestly. Toggle torque. You there, be dead cargo. Toggle torque. That's going to get rid of a lot of that shimmy and shake up there that is happening because we've got a big torque arm up there, a big torque force up there, applying force to that little bitty docking port. Phenomenal cosmic torque! Itty bitty docking port. Name the reference. <laughs> Alright. So we've got another Kerbal problem here. I really wish this was in 2.25. 
just don't know if it's very high up on the uh, importance list. I don't know how long this burn is going to take, and that is a problem. I want to know how long the burn is going to take. We're going to have to go into simulation mode. Simulation mode is double F5 for simulation mode, right? <laughs> <laughs> it does. Um, yeah. I'm not going to lie, man. I think I'm going to go to bed. Okay, that's cool. That's yeah, all that's good. Right. We're getting out to Lathe. How many people are still going? Let's see. Uh, 99. 99? Are you out of your mind? Just a, just a couple. Just a couple. We're going to get this out to Lathe. That's what I'm going to call the stream. DK, dude, I totally appreciate you hanging out. Guys, if you want yeah, anytime, to man. follow someone else... DK is going to say something in chat. You can click on his name and follow him. I okay. hope that he's been here long enough that everybody's already followed him. Shame on you if you haven't. <laughs> but anyways, dude, DK, I totally appreciate it. For sure. My good friend. Yeah, sure thing. Anytime, really. Like I said. Mm -hmm. I will see you manana, sir. All right. Have a good night to yourself and everybody in the chat. Mm -hmm. Have an excellent rest of your Thursday slash early morning Friday. And don't forget to type <laughs> something over there so people... There you go. Excellent. Yep. You got it. Okay, tools. Later, dude. Good games. All right, y'all. We're set up for this burn. Declarations disconnected from your channel. Valdez's post mortem. Thank command you, Valdez's post mortem command center. That is a World of Tanks throwback right there. Because <laughs> I love to tell people how to drive their tanks. All right, F5 for safety. I'm like, dude, dude, dude. There's a guy behind you. Turn 90 degrees and shoot him. <laughs> this key pressed down during a KSS mod. Is the key pressed down? The bottom, a KSS mod. Kushwa, if you're asking me what's showing the keys that I'm pressing, that's something that I set up. Um, send me a message in Twitch, and I will send you a link to download that. Yeah, it's something that I set up, a config file that I set up to uh, display using a program to display the keys that are important to KSP down there. That is what that is. So send me a message, and I'm more than happy to send that to you. All right. I need to know how long this burn is going to take. Quadruple F5 for great safeties. And we will go ahead. <laughs> Info isn't here, so I'll say for you should all follow DK. I mean, I don't, but you all should. Wait, what? I totally, I totally follow DK. Wait, you chill out, good sir. Click. That button says unfollow. I hope you weren't saying that I don't follow DK, because there it is right there. <laughs> all right, guys. I need to know how long this burn is going to take. What I can do is F5 five times for quintuple safety. I can go ahead and throttle these engines all the way up. This is telling me it's going to be a 13 minute burn? That's terrible. That's absolutely terrible. This is not good at all. This craft is lame. And it should feel lame. Because 13 minutes? Ugh. That's really bad. Hmm. Let's see what we can do. We're gonna have to do it multiple burns. What can you do about it? Not much. We may have to go into a different orbit. Wow, that totally messes us up. Because it is these nukes. Even this is the bane of the nukes, right, guys? On the larger engines, on the larger payloads, on the larger craft, you have such long burn times when you use nuclears. And I even put six. I'm also not even believing that that's correct. What is the mass of this craft? I guess it does have buku fuel in the middle. Let's look at the vessel information. What is the mass of the craft? 127 tons. That's actually not small. Oh. <laughs> I could probably do it while time warping. Teflon Mike, that is what I'm going to give it a try there. Um, Littlefoot, if you're taking off, I guess you maybe you were saying bye to DK if you're taking off later to you too, but it's always it's always hard to say. Um, here's what we're going to do. This is going to be a 13 minute burn. I'm just going to half 13 and half of 13 is what? Half of 12 is 6. Half of one minute is that, so six minute and thirty second. Basically, when this says T minus six minutes and thirty seconds, we're going to start the burn. We're going to have a very bad time of it, though, because that long of a is definitely going to take us very close to Kerbin's atmosphere. Hey, F5 for safety. Let's see if this is a huge problem with these nuclear engines. All right, F5 for. Oh my gosh, that was never going to work. Yeah, 4.0 thrust away from six engines. Yeah, faster to send up more engines. You have an amazing idea to do this. Yeah, but I don't have anything to dock them to unless I dock them to there. Normally what I do, I would totally uh, fire a huge engine on this. Nice, Spartan. Um, Could you send that to me in a message? Because I'll never, the, the chat will scroll past it. Eh, hex chat, GitHub, blog, bash chat. Actually, I could just right click and open a new tab. I'll do that. Dude, I'd totally appreciate the help, man, with getting set up with that. 
When this says 6 minutes and 30 seconds, I'm going to start this burn and we're going to see how it goes. I'm not sure how it's going to go. It is a very long burn. And what is our problem right now? We're burning straight down towards Kerbin. This may illustrate a very large weakness of the nuclear engines. Let's find out. I'm sure, Adel, you would tell me what yours is. <laughs> Staying for... Oh, nice. Quassel. I don't even know, and honestly, I don't want to be struck by paralysis of choice. Sometimes I will not do something because there are too many freaking choices. And if somebody just tells me what to do, I totally appreciate it. Guys, look at this. We're going to be burning almost straight down at Kerbin. The more we go, the more we kind of miss the side. I've only got another 15 seconds, but I am going to start this burn whenever it gets to Spartan Dude. Thank you so much. You're awesome. Yeah, exactly. I don't, I, I don't want to go out there. We're just going to try to do the burn like this. I think we'll be fine. There's 630, guys. We did F5 for safety already. Let's go ahead and light this candle. You know, we could also, like, burn some RCS or something to bring our burn time down. Wow. Such slowness. That doesn't even seem like it's going down in the right amount of time. Does it? Is that right? Hmm... Maybe so. We are going to try to time warp. Hey, if you didn't know, you can actually compulsory time warp. I can't physicsless time warp. I can't do the normal physicsless time warp where physics is turned off. If physics is turned off, that also means I can't gain acceleration, right? But if you want to force physics while you're doing a time warp, you can actually hold down alt and press the forward time warp button. And you'll see that actually drops it down into 2x mode. It looks like this is working exactly the way that I wanted it to. Do you see how the plane has bottomed out on the fuel tank? That is exactly what I was hoping for. Let's see if I can't get the right angle. Yeah! I knew it was going to push down on those docking ports, but I wanted to have it bottom out just like that. That is actually really cool. That is exactly what I wanted. Dare me to turn this thing while I'm uh, doing the burn? Let's go look at the map first. In what is happening to my orbit? My periaps used to be 125, now my periaps is 82 and falling. And we're still three minutes away from the periaps, basically. One minute away from the periaps, so that's fine. So that is the problem with those ultra-long burns, right? I'm still pointing down at Kerbin. In fact, I hope I don't go down into the atmosphere. That would be bad times. Now I'm finally getting to where I'm not quite pointing at Kerbin. Looks a little bit weird. It looks like I'm not pointing at Kerbin. This must be physics problematics -ness. Yeah, there you go, because you're not yet at the node, so the time isn't going to go down as fast because it's not optimal. Interesting. No problem. Yep, that makes sense. It's going slow because of physics lag. A little bit, maybe. Break the burn into multiple maneuvers after I reload. Let's see here. I think we'll be, we'll be, we will be fine because now we're going apoaps. Look at those nuclear engines and physics warp. Those things are putting out some thrust. That was a Kerbin escape. Look at the, sh the lights going by, right? I almost wonder how inaccurate this is. Inaccurate, inaccurate. We're looking good, though. I mean, we're doing the burn. We're about halfway through the burn. I could do multiple... You know something? I'm the same way. I am absolutely the same way. And all in one instant as well. Yep. That's why long burns. You guys are exactly right. That is why the longer burns with the nuclear engines... I've got six of them tossed on here. Let's see how close we can get. It's a very inaccurate burn. I'm weebling wobbling all over the place. I'm having to do it in physics warp. We still have a minute left in there is something. The camera just flipped again. Probably escaping from the solar system. <laughs> Did anybody check to see if we were gonna run into the moon? So a thing you can do, and a thing that we do in real life, is multiple burns. Down at my periaps, do a burn at the right place in time, kick my apoaps way up go way up around it, and when I come back down, I'll have more velocity. Do another burn when I get back down there. It makes the interplanetary maneuvers a lot more difficult to plan and execute. I honestly wouldn't say that somebody who's new to KSP should try for one of those. That is kind of what we do in real life, but it is pretty uh, complicated, McCated. So, now we've only got a minute left, and I think for the last minute of it, I will turn off the time warp so that I can get a little bit more accuracy out of it. But, what we really could have done here... Did those things turn themselves back on? I really hope they didn't. What we really could have done here was basically put more thrust on this craft. Put a bigger engine on this thing. 
Let's see how we're doing. There we go. Now I can fly the last 30 seconds with more accuracy. In fact, I would have wanted to put some higher thrust engines on here. We wouldn't have got the same Delta B V, but what we could have done is got a, this burn done a lot more quickly, and it would have been a lot faster burn. I just said the same thing twice, didn't I? It would have been a lot more accurate burn. I'm going to do it anyways. T plus six minutes. Look, we're really close. The burn time was almost exactly right. The question is burning under physics acceleration. I wonder if that completely screwed up our accuracy. So I am continuing to burn here. Burn here. We're taking fuel out of that tank now. We've already completely used that tank. We still have these little side tanks. We're just about done with this burn. Let's make sure we keep it accurate. And look at that. It almost looks like the craft in non-physics warp has bottomed out just a little bit. Those those Clampatron regular docking ports do compress quite a bit when you're burning against them like this. We're up to a two point we're up to a 3.0 thrust to weight now, which is cool. Let's see how this is. That says that we're good. I'm not sure we got the encounter out of that. Let's try to make it zero. Not exactly zero. That right there is close enough. So, just get rid of this. Did we get an encounter? I doubt it. We are definitely leaving the solar system. We're definitely leaving Kerbin's sphere of influence. Let me just get rid of that right quick. Do that. Do that. We still have three grand left. Docking port. Docking port. Docking port. <laughs> <laughs> so look at that wow we actually still got it even though that burn was really inefficient it, w it was really inaccurate i guess we were still able to get the not so solid encounter with jewel which we will go look at why did that work if i was in a 100 or if i was in a 70 kilometer orbit could i have done that no i could not have done that from a 70 kilometer orbit i had to be up at a buck 20 look at that that is really close to Jewel, honestly. Hmm. Focus on. No, no, no. No, no, no. More Lemon Pledge. Focus. There we go. Focus Jewel. Let's zoom in. So we've got a little bit of rounding error going here. It's still outside the orbit of the latest Jewel planet. We can set it as the target. We are definitely getting close to Jewel, though. We're going to have to clean that up. But to clean that up, we're going to clean it up outside of Kerbin's Sphere of Influence. So I'm going to turn off this. I'm going to turn on this and go to Kerbin Alarm Clock. I'm going to tell me Sphere of Influence change. One minute out. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and start time warping just to get that done. While I'm time warping, let me check the chat. That Sphere of Influence changes in how long? One day? One more bit. All right. That'll give me a little bit of time to check the chat and get caught up here. Yeah, Adel, you're actually not right. Or, I mean, you're actually not right. You're not wrong. Um, Jewel is probably the... Uh, da -da 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 -da. Jewel is probably one of the easier planets because A, it has an atmosphere that you can aero break in, and B, it's really big. It has lots of gravity, so you can get an encounter by a, by a further away pass. That is a good point. Duna almost always, Duna almost always seems to be the first place that people go, um, but Jewel cost a little bit more delta v but it's easier to basically hit it's a bigger hole to knock the pool ball into basically and i think we're good there mm -hmm. wookie break the bone into multiple maneuvers since we got the encounter um you were saying we could definitely do multiple maneuvers we could go around once burn half of it come around again burn another half of it and see how that works um that is something that we could do um but in the interest of time here, I won't do it. Maybe I need to do an advanced interplanetary transfer, and we'll do like a swing by orbit like that, where we kick our apoaps way up, we go all the way around, we come back down to the periaps, and we burn again at the periaps and split that burn into multiple maneuvers. That is definitely a real thing. Wait, what? <laughs> which is de wait what easiest? Which is definitely against that what? Docking. <laughs> I don't even know what's going on there. I don't know what's going on. Kerbal Research! That's an interesting name. Kerbal Research, welcome to Kerbal Space Academy. We're doing an interplanetary transfer. We've already covered space plane design. We actually designed a space plane up on the top of this. And we are... Oh! Docking. <laughs> I know. I've spent time on a farm. I think I know what we're talking about now. So anyways. <laughs> we designed a space plane. It's got room for eight going out to a lathe. We orbited up, met with the orbital hotel. 
We designed a kicker stage to fly at Interplanetary. We had to improvise out there at the VAB, because we didn't plan for that to happen. But what this kicker stage is, it actually carries a full load of fuel for the plane, extra RCS for the plane, and it is going to go into orbit. Just move on. <laughs> It's going to go into orbit around Lath. We're going to do a couple aero capture maneuvers here. And then we are going to try to fly that plane down. Guys, I don't do a lot of plane operations to Lath. I'm not going to say that it's one of my better things in the atmospheric mod that I have in place. Actually makes it really hard to see the land on Lath. So if you have a good way to find a good place to land on Lath, let me know. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> I think it is a slingshot around Eve to Moho and around to Duna and then ran out of Delta V. <laughs> nice. Back then it didn't make sense that you shouldn't burn 3,000 meters per second. Yeah, uh huh. I know, that's. Wookie, we couldn't get it done. We could not have got it done from a lower altitude. That would not have happened whatsoever because we would have actually gone down into Kerbin's atmosphere. But from that higher atmosphere, the higher atmosphere, we lost a little tiny bit of Oberth effect. The poles have nice... Is that like a, like a troll thing? Like go to the 18th hole at 3 a.m. or something? <laughs> I don't know. If I go up there and there's nothing but water as far as the eye can see, I hope I have enough fuel to get the rest of the way. My in-game chat window isn't scrolling. It should be now. The portion of the chat looks odd on stream. How did that happen? This is the wrong side. That is not what I... How did it lose this window all of a sudden? Dang you, OBS. Let me see if I can't fix it right quick. Now it looks good. Yeah, there we go. Um, I don't know how I got over to that other window. I'm not sure what just happened. But uh, anyways, totally not trolling. All right, good deal. Or delete the cloud clear on the what? <laughs> Came in the wrong way. I hit Lathe going straight down. Ran into Lathe at six kilometers. Dude, Teflon Mike, I've got a highlight of a Dr. Pepper can doing that last night. <laughs> we came straight down to... Uh, <laughs> Kerbin at 6 kilometers per second. Let's go over here and do this uh, sphere of influence change, guys. No alarms on the list. Let's scroll in. Alright, that's Jupiter. <laughs> that's Jewel. You hit backspace to go back to your craft. This is telling me that it has no clue what we're doing. This is just a buggy sort of thing. It will be fixed pretty soon. We've got a little bit of blue line, but for some reason that icon's over there. Not sure what's going on. But, uh, Scout's Honor, I am not someone who time warps through Sphere of Influence changes because of the way that it works. If it were even lower, it and take a long time. Yeah, Wookie, you definitely have to, uh... I mean, really, the best thing to do there is to get out of Kerbin's Sphere of Influence, just kind of bust out a little bit, and then compute a transfer node outside of the Sphere of Influence, right? The matter maneuver. <laughs> oh, there we go. We're turning on, and here's this weird, not so solid encounter with Jewel. We are leaving spheres. Leaving late. Leaving. Ah, carbon sphere of influence. Guys, it's getting late. Let's go ahead and time warp a little bit, which turns off the physics errors, the rounding errors. And what I'm going to do, I mean, this is so good, guys. I think I'm just going to go out there, land on one of the poles. Luis, thank you for letting me know. What was that? Who was that? I missed it. Anyways. Did you do the high-pitched manly grunt? 73rd! 73rd, thank you for the follow. I totally appreciate it. Wow, we've been going for a while here, guys. This is like a seven-hour stream. But you know something? When you get hosted by Kerbal TV, you carry the torch. You don't freaking go home like a little girl with your tail between your legs at the end. And... Still going. <laughs> 102 people still watching this. You guys are so freaking awesome. I hope you're. I hope you're learning some stuff. I mean, that's the entire point. Or I hope you're telling. You're teaching me some stuff. Maybe. We're not gonna worry about this weird encounter right now. We're good on battery charge because I've got RTGs on the craft. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bigger at an alarming rate. Nice. Bam, medic dude. Again, thank you for what you are. We'll see you tomorrow. Hopefully. Hopefully you're not very busy tomorrow. Hopefully you're not busy, very busy on any night. But thanks for hanging out, man. We'll see you next time. Guys, I'm just going to time warp out to Jewel. And I'm not going to worry about the rest of this. So let's just get this time warp done and see if I can't get in Jewel's sphere of influence when I'm out there. 
Yeah, buddy, learn. Oh, nice. Thank you. What did Dan say? Was that a Firefly person? There you go. <laughs> All right. Here we go. The moment you get out to Moho and you realize your ducking port is upside down, I'm sad. And by upside down, I bet you mean ducked to the craft, not just upside down, like the little windows upside down. Hey, man, keep in mind, when you started up this game, when you loaded it up, you didn't have an intercept out at Moho. You weren't out there. You got it done. You can do it again. <laughs> you definitely know that you can do it again because you did it once. That is my... I look at things that way sometimes. Sometimes when things kind of hit the fan, I'm like, you know something, when I started this, I didn't have any of this stuff, and I can get it done again. Look at that. 318, 300 days coming in. Dude, Dave Kerman, I appreciate that, man. I mean, there's some, there are a lot of cool streamers out there. There are a lot of streamers that do a lot of good stuff. My entire thing is to help demystify KSP, help people learn how cool it is. And I'm glad, I mean, being entertaining, I just kind of run my mouth a lot. There we go. That's looking better. But I do appreciate all the comments like that, man. All the different supports. Learn nothing because I know more than you. Nice. <laughs> all right. We're about to get in here. And I think maybe now do we have a solid? Are we close enough now? No, it's still finicky. Let's see if we can't do just a little bit of a tweak here. Add maneuver. And see if I can't get closer in. Focus view. Zoom in. Let's see how these different orbital maneuvers affect my pass on Jewel. I'm going to try for some radial in, uh, radial out first. Because a non-retrograde orbit would be nice. That's what I want. How much delta V is this going to cost us? We could have done this a lot sooner and it would have been a lot more efficient. But I'm just going to go ahead and do it from here. We've got the delta V. You know what would be awesome? To do a retrograde arrow break at Jewel. <laughs> and then break around Lathe so that we're prograde. Wow, that doesn't even think that we're going to get an encounter at all. Let's try down. This would have made a lot more sense to do a lot further out. But honestly, we will be fine. That looks good. Whenever it starts to do that, that looks good. That right there actually looks pretty good. And now, what if I... I wonder if it would be more efficient instead of doing the radial in and out to do the... Uh, anything but the blue ones. Right, dude, Matrix, you're right. They're the most inefficient things. If you're using the blue burns, the radial in and radial out, that basically just means that you burned at the wrong time. <laughs> they are the most inefficient ones. Let me see. Maybe it'll be more efficient to burn uh, rush. Ooh, what is that? A Tylo periaps, a Tylo flyby. Let's try to do it without the blue ones. Let's. I, I, you're right. The blue ones are the worst ones to use. They basically mean you've mucked something completely up. So if reducing my, how is that affecting me? That's 39. Look at this. That actually is a lot more efficient to not use the blue ones in this case. That is excellent because that was like 300. And now we're getting down to a much more efficient. There we go. Let's do some more retrograde. I like it. I'm glad you said that. I probably would have just slacked off. Oh, look at that. Direct to lathe. That's what we're going to do. Look at that lathe encounter, y'all. We're going to have a lathe encounter. And we're not even going to arrow break it, Jewel. We'll just straight arrow break it lathe. <laughs> the Julian troll, right? <laughs> what? I don't even know what that means. Killer ODST, irrelevant thing. Now you're learning how to be... Dude, always be improving, man. Plus, you don't need a significant other if you want to spend time on this game. <laughs> don't tell Chocomole. Look at that lathe encounter. So the gravity swing past Jewel. Nope. Okay, we need to put a little bit more in. How close of a lathe encounter can we get? Look at that, y'all. Bam! That's actually a lathe impact. <laughs> yes. 
that looks great. That absolutely looks great. The direct pass on Lathe. And it's Lathe Prograde. Isn't that awesome? I didn't mean to do that. If you don't know, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I need to go to Julian. No, 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 Tyler, the Julian Troll. You're right. It's such a big sphere of influence with such a sl slow, blah, 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 low orbit. It, uh, it's pretty easy to get an encounter with Tylo. Look at that, though. That is freaking outstanding. Gosh, I don't even care about the inclination. I could fix the inclination, but I, I can't focus my view. I can focus my view. Look at this, y'all. <laughs> Let's see if we can't tweak it. Just a little tiny hair. Nope. We need to go in this direction. And bam. That's not quite exactly what I want. Let's do a little bit more. There we go. That is pretty much equatorial around Lathe. Although, remember, I did. Ooh. I needed a polar orbit. Every day, Killer ODST. Every day, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're on a website and that sort of stuff, but they are pretty much daily. Um, on the weekend, I do special streams. Every other week, I take off. Every other week, or every other weekend, I mean, I take off. And uh, every other weekend when I'm not taking off. I do two special things. I do a Kerbal Boot Camp on Saturdays, which is like an eight-hour stream. Take you from, I've never played Kerbal Space Program before, all the way up to landing on the moon. On Saturdays, I run the KSA Help Desk, which is basically me answering questions. People have a, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Basically, uh, me answering people's questions. Uh, you have a craft you can't get to fly. You really can't figure something out. I do the Kerbal Space Academy Help Desk. We really want to come into a polar orbit, don't we? So, let us see what we can do with that. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more like that. And then a little bit more like this. That looks fantastic, honestly. Look at that. A polar pass at Lathe. If we do a little bit more normal, we can actually... Uh, we'll have to tune this. We will definitely have to tune this. That right there is an atmospheric pass at Lathe. Let's see how this works, y'all. Deadly reentry. You can go away. <laughs> but let's get this node burned, honestly. Uh, collection of atoms. My educational background. I originally thought I wanted to be an aerospace engineer, and then the dot-com boom happened. Um, when I was 18 years old, 17 years old, I started doing computer consulting, like, just for people um, who needed help with computers, because I always like computers. Went to college, started studying computer engineering, figured I would actually like computer science instead. And so for a very brief time, Killer ODST, thank you for the follow, good sir. For a very brief time, I uh, went ahead and went to school. Call it three semesters, but the third one didn't count because I got picked up by a dot-com company um, that actually had me doing online training for people. I was a director of operations for an online training company that had an online website we didn't have streaming back then. This was in the year 2000, but uh, an online website where people could go, kids really, could go and learn computer programming. Like if you want to learn JavaScript, you want to learn, it was ASP back then. Um, if you wanted to learn Cold Fusion, if you wanted graphic editing. So I was actually, uh, I managed the online website that taught all that stuff. So I've got kind of a actual background in curricula. I didn't finish college, didn't finish college, but I've got an actual experiential background in online curriculum and online learning. Then I actually went and made some money for a little while. <laughs> Doing technology consulting for uh, Microsoft Dynamics products. It's not a lot of fun. But that's what I do. I really just like to talk. And I love things like this. This game is so freaking cool. Let's actually get this burn done. Add. There's that. That's the node. Let's do it one minute out of the node. 49 second burn. That's fine. You wouldn't know a coning plan if it danced in front of you. <laughs> Chalk house. <laughs> what? Uh, you have a cunning plan. It's a very cunning hat is what it is. I think that's what you're looking for. A very cunning hat. Man walks down the street wearing that hat. People know he's not afraid of anything. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Let's see if we can't go leaf on the wind. This is going to be like the world's most dangerous atmospheric arrow break sort of deal with a plane attached to the top of this craft. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend it, guys. Would not recommend it. And I am going to do something special here. I'm going to tweak this orbit, guys. 
I am definitely going to tweak the orbit. Do we have any... There we go. That's good right there. And let's just go ahead and fast forward on up to this. Black Adder references. Wait, what? <laughs> What's up, Red One? We're actually taking this SSTO out to Lathe. So we've got an eight-passenger SSTO using stock parts, taking her out to Lathe. We've got a direct Lathe encounter. We're not even going to touch Jewel. We're going to slingshot past Jewel. I'll actually show you. Pressing M in the chat does not bring up the, <laughs> the map screen. So we've got a pretty complicated orbital maneuver going in here. We're coming in this way. We're slingshotting past Jewel, not arrow capturing a Jewel, but slingshotting straight over to Lathe into a polar orbit at Lathe. So that is what we are going to be trying to do. Then we're going to be trying to land at one of the north poles of Lathe. I guess I do see some flat terrain there. I see some f terrain through these at least. Is there any? Oh, it's like backwards. That's cool. But anyways, we're time warping up to this node and we've got a uh, orbital trick shot here going. Coming to the sphere of influence of Jewel, bending our orbit with Jewel, going straight to Lathe, and we're basically doing SSTO direct to Lathe. Fancy heat shield. <laughs> it'll totally flip the hell out, but it'll be hilarious. Black Adder, I actually don't know. So the question is, when it was in Firefly, were they referencing Black Adder? What happened from when you were docking to now? <laughs> I've crashed there once, never landed. Doesn't really help if the center of drag is in front of the center of math. I'm gonna flip her around and I think I'll put her nukes first. And we may transfer all of our fuel down to the down there to that stage. We can definitely do that. This is this time warp is inconsequential, y'all. We need to time warp a lot faster than this nonsense. Whoa! <laughs> do one. Alright. There's my node. 49 second burn. Delete that node for me. Thank you. 49 second burn here, and we are going to watch Lathe like a hawk. Half of 49, that's half of 50. 25 seconds, we'll basically burn at 25 seconds. That is going to give me half my burn before the node and half my burn after the node. When you do a node, it expects you to do an instantaneous application of that much delta V, 195.7, at the time that we do it. And we can't do that. Rocket engines do not work that way, much like windmills, name the reference. And, uh... We are going to, 25 seconds, right there, start this burn. Meh, okay, I'll take it. The other cool thing we can do is use RCS to fine tune it. We're totally gonna do that. Windmills do not work that way! <laughs> it doesn't make the plan sound any less terrifying. This should be good. I should just go in backwards. I am gonna go in backwards. The green line, that is an orbit that we are clipping through. <laughs> Some sort of orbit, that's Lathe's orbit actually. The big green line is Lathe's orbit. So let's see what we got here, y'all. Keep, stay on target. Stay on target. Throttle down, Dos. Get it done. Throttle down more. Oh, look at that! That's pretty darn close. We are now in wiggle room. We are definitely now in wiggle room. Look at this. So what I can do, RCS activate. Aha. Is that fix? Yeah. Bing. What is that out there? Tylo periaps. <laughs> Wait, this periaps. Okay, 13 days, Tylo periaps, wait, 130 days, 130 days, 0 hours, 58 minutes, 130 days, 3 hours, alright, whew, so if we slingshot past Lathe, past Lathe, let's see if we can give it a little bit more, nope, we're not exactly on it, will anything else suck it down for us, Oh yeah, girly, come on now, no, 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 that's just probably turning us, that's not a very good way for it to go, dude, TTX 360, thank you for the follow, man. I'm Dos Valdez. This is Kerbal Space Academy. We're doing orbital pool maneuvers here, basically. You know something, guys? We can correct for this whenever we come into Lathe's orbit. Let's just go ahead and turn that off. That looks fan freaking tastic. We are going to be going by Lathe at a pretty good clip. 130 day, 1 hour, 3 minutes. 130 day, 0 hour. Really? 
<laughs> this is going to be great. We're going to be flying by. Look at this orbital velocity. We're going to be clipping by Lathe. Freaking ridiculous. Yay, Morbo. Morbo. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Was it Jules' orbit? Nice. That's okay. Did I say it was Lathe's orbit? Yeah, that would be the blue line. Thanks, you got my back there. <laughs> Artek. Pokemon 92. Thank you for the follow. Refollow? I seem to remember your name, but a the Pokemon two-digit number afterwards is probably not that unique. All right. This is going to be very interesting. <laughs> I got to see what our orbital velocity is going to be when we get out there. Let's go make some preparations since we're 130 days out. <laughs> Let's put lots of mass down here. In fact, how much fuel do I have in this tank? Well, we're doing the fuel transfer. We won't worry about that right now. Let's put all the mass down here and see if... <laughs> it may rip the plane off the docking port, not gonna lie. I almost wonder if I should put enough fuel in it. We'll F5 for safety. I kind of feel like maybe I should fuel up the plane a little bit. Just in case it gets ripped off the docking port. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh no, I've never been on... Dude, Pokemon, thank you so much. I do appreciate the follow. First time watching, dude. That is awesome. There is that. We've also got fuel over here. Let's go ahead. That's fine. This is going to be good, guys. I don't... I don't know about them wings sticking off the side, basically. Like the front of the craft and the wings. We can't shield them. We can't protect our women. We can't protect our wings. We can't protect the front of the plane. They don't have heat shields big enough for this arrow capture. So, let us go ahead and do this. Let's get through all these Sphere of Influence changes, beginning with the Julian Sphere of Influence change. Kerbal Alarm Clock. Talk to me, Goose. There we go. Put it one minute out. That is fine. At alarm. Let us fast forward. F5 for safety. <laughs> Quick saves, yeah. Alex, dude, Das, just wanted to say I got two probes circling the moon in Minimus and a station going to... going around the moon, too. Super stoked. Dude! You are awesome, Alex509. Man, you've been here... For multiple streams, I think you were even here for boot camp, if I remember correctly. I am glad that you got those probes going. I'm glad you got the station up there. I hope... <laughs> didn't piss it in Pancake Fight. Dude, I hope that I was able to help you out, man. I hope you enjoy Corporal Space Tram. If you've got pro problems, if you've got questions, join us for all these streams, man. Uh, congratulations on your successful missions. I need, like, I need, a, I need a command that's like, congratulations on successful missions for people. Because that would be totally awesome. iToy123 got the follow there. Let's go ahead. Let's time warp this. This is 98 days. 95, 4, 3, 2, 1. Did I ever turn off the KSP music? Or am I streaming both? Such a noob. Dude! Matrix Aran! We can't protect our women. There you go, man. You got exactly the reference. I didn't expect anybody to get that one. Honest, that's a little bit far out there. Good movie, though. Excellent movie. That was definitely a dude. That was so far out there, man. I, I couldn't even see the reference. It was so far from the reference. I did not expect anybody to get that one, but, uh... Good job. <laughs> definitely a Jackal reference. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> good job. Nice. Caboose with the good job. Tossing out the good job. Mitsutsuki. Well, the center of mass is near the center of lift. Is yeah, that's correct. Never tested in pancaking flight. I did not. I'm just worried that the center of lift is going to be so close to the center of mass it's going to rip that docking port off. <laughs> Does not break. <laughs> we'll use that one at an appropriate time. Oh, my gosh. You guys are so much fun to hang out with. I'm just sitting here talking. We're definitely going to get like a, uh, it may be a little bit hard to moderate, but I'm, I'm trying to think of some sort of multiplayer server or something like that. Maybe a weekend sort of thing. I can't do it all the time. <laughs> we are coming into Jules' sphere of influence with the quickness. There was our sphere of influence change. Let's see how it affected Lathe's orbit. I can't even see Jewel. Is it this way? No. Is it this way? No. Jewel is like totally hard to find. Let's try, uh, let's try Lathe. We can totally set Lathe as the target. We are way the heck out, though. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Come on, now. Nah. Where you at, Jewel? That's the rest of the solar system. There we go. We're looking good. 
We're looking good. It looks like it did screw us up a little bit. Where is Lathe right now? No. Where's Lathe? Hmm. Oh, I had to get closer in. We'll be fine. Lathe Paraps is 559. Five, That's okay. Let's just go ahead and Alt F5 for safety right now. We're going to say Jewel. <laughs> so high. <laughs> Such a script kitty. Remember the day the jackal was just, 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 just. Wait, is that like a real thing? Jackal, think the one's off Halo. Two different times, two different times. We are different ages, I believe. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, get on out here, guys. We are entering this jewel sphere of influence at three, four, seven, six meters per second. I just did an Alt F5 for extra safety. And let's go ahead and get on in there. It is going to be very easy for us to go slingshotting by Jewel with the quickness. 30, 20, 28, 27, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We're picking up speed. We're coming in fast. Look at that. So my real question is, where are the orbits for these other planets? Moons, actually. Moons. All right, now we got them. It's like there's a, there's a Kerbal system back there, then there's a Julian system right there. That's actually kind of cool looking. Let's print that screen. All right, zoom on into Lathe. Why don't I see Lathe right now? There's Lathe. Focus view. So, we're good. What we need to do, I think that burning normal a little bit will bring us into Lathe's atmosphere by just a little bit. Better safe than sorry. I don't think we really need to do it right now, but I think a little tiny puff of RCS normal right now will fix us. Normal is horizontal north on the nav ball. So let us go to north and let us go to horizon. And I hope that this isn't one of those opposite maneuvers where as I sling by jewel, this is actually going to move me away, but we'll be okay. Either way, any way you slice it, we will be okay here. Alright, did I miss any chat there when y'all were asking me? Two probe cores. Do, 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 do. There's my educational budget. Collection of Atoms asked me the question about the background there, so that's what, uh, hope I got that done. <laughs> you wouldn't know Majesty if it... <laughs> 150 seconds at 25. Frustrated Frank. 1750. That's actually pretty good, dude. Make sure you still have some vertical speed, because you're going to have to get out of that atmosphere. Don't lose all your vertical speed. But that is not bad to get 1750 at 25. Congratulations. Unless you are now out of fuel. Kukumachi! Haven't seen your name before. Only 27. You've watched a lot of films. You're not that much uh, younger than me then. Excellent. Let's go ahead and try this bit of normal RCS poofing. That's making it bigger. And the other direction is definitely making it smaller. But we actually need to burn anti-normal there's really no reason to use all this RCS, and we really don't need this fine control yet. 51. Yeah, we need to use the main engines for this. So let us turn off RCS. Flip on around. I can only use my RCS for prograde and retrograde maneuvers. Because remember, I balanced the ship about its center of mass and uh, with the RCS build aid tool. So I'm actually just going to flip around here and see if I can't do a little bit tiny main engine burn right now on my kicker stage. Just to bring this up into a lace atmosphere. Focus, focus, focus. There we go. So 180 on the nav ball is south. Horizontal 180 is south. It's also con concurrent. Means the same thing as anti-normal. Let's give us a little bit of thrust. Yeah, that looks good. 50, 40. And I think a good pass is probably 26. 20. 22. We'll put it down to 22. We have a freaking... Boatload! Boatload is a KSP TV friendly word. Boatload of velocity. In fact, it would be really cool if we could just ditch the plane and land. Anything above 70. I'm not, uh, depends, 100 kilometers, a bit higher, can help rendezvous. Atmosphere ended 70. Wait, on Lathe? I thought it was 56 on Lathe or 58 on Lathe. You lose weight. Upshot of being fast in the atmosphere is you lose weight. What? <laughs> Thanks for saying your name. No worries. 100k minimum? I want... To, I'm going to aero break this. 
What am I missing? You guys are answering another question. What's a good... Oh, there you go, Dyeron. What's a good altitude? Yeah, you guys definitely have it. 100k minimum. A buck 20? I usually do a buck 25. Um, because that also gives me the other time warp option. One more level of time warp. Um, 100 kilometer is definitely good. I wouldn't go... Just definitely go for, don't go for 70 or 80. Because you need some wiggle room between you and Kerbin's atmosphere. Alright, we were totally uh, talking about two different things. Yeah, there you go. Go for higher no matter what. I mean, Frustrated Frank, I've got a station up at 125 because you get the additional uh, time warp ability up there. So let us warp to our next sphere of influence. This is actually going to be pretty cool. There we go, one minute out. Let's watch this Julian flyby. There's Jewel. She's phasing out or something. OMG, it's Jacker! Welcome to Kerbal Space Academy. I'm Das Valdez. We're playing Orbital Pool here. We're going to bounce it off the Julian side bumper, whatever the pool term is, and put it straight into the lathe corner pocket. <laughs> Not even kidding, because look at this. <laughs> we are totally <laughs> swinging by Jewel at a high rate of speed and turning such that we will nail lathe on a polar orbit into Lathe's atmosphere. That is what we're planning to do right now. Orbital pool, not a very fast encounter. Two days, 57 minutes. Two days, one hour. Wow, we're gonna go by Lathe so fast. <laughs> we have what? 15 minutes in Lathe's sphere of influence. That is not very much. Not very much. Cushion. Dog. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is the dog? <laughs> Poolside bumper. Yeah, whatever it was. Poolside. The bumper. They're definitely called bumpers, aren't they? <laughs> You're actually grav breaking on Jewel. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm grav slingshotting. I'm going in a totally different direction. Ever so slightly. Alright, and we, had, we also had a Tylo encounter, but that's not surprising entering the Julian system. Guys, let's go ahead and time warp. I'm going to put a node right here just so we have nice picturesque views. Add that. I know I'm talking so much. I am. I want to get a nice picturesque view of Jewel as we come by. One day, five hours, cooking into the Julian system. It's three. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know something? Let's give our passengers a bit of a view here. Let's go ahead and point our windows at Jewel. And see if they can see Jewel. Because remember, we did design the SSTO such that the passengers could see out the windows and be influenced by cool things. Let's go for an IVA right quick. No Jewel out that window. Can't see that window. This dude. He got the, he's got he been riding this way for years. Oh, man. Can't see anything out that window either. Dang. So terrible. This guy. <laughs> what is that? That, I love that needle going around and around. That thing is going to wear out. The bearing in it's going to wear out. Our vertical speed is freaking pegged at negative. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, at least we brought our fire extinguisher. Do not exceed operational limits. <laughs> all right, time warp till we get down there. There we go. Let's get that time warp done. One day. Five, four. Check my chat, see if I missed anything. If it's proportional to my what? <laughs> as your orbit essentially goes down, your wings don't need to compensate for as much gravity loss. So your angle of attack can decrease and you can fly faster. Are they or have they incorporated an online multiplayer? There's some mods that allow you to do that? What is this, Caboose? Congrats! Dude! <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Thank you for putting that together, man. Here's Jewel. <laughs> nice caboose. Thanks. Look at us going around the Julian system here. How far did this alarm? 17 minutes. We'll just go ahead and time warp right here. Some of the moons are on the other side. That... Who would that be? Vol? Out there? Wow, everybody is behind Jewel. Look at this. The entire freaking system is hidden behind Jewel. <laughs> Lath is behind Jewel. Tylo behind Jewel. These guys you probably can't see. Yeah, the guys behind us you probably can't see yet. Let's just go ahead and get some sweet, sweet screenshots here. <laughs> F2. Yes. Jewel. Prince 
Print screen. That's a that's a pretty good screenshot. Ah yes. You're so fast in your orbit, but still in the atmosphere, your wings don't need to lift anymore. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Nice shimmy, dude. Thanks for the official shimmy. Totally appreciate you hanging out, man. It is an honor to have you in my channel, good sir. <laughs> but I do appreciate you fielding the official KSP questions. I'm getting hosed by KSP TV, but I'm not actually an official KSP TV streamer. Right now. <laughs> Alrighty. That's a pretty good screenshot. Let's go ahead and go up to our next alarm. See if we can't get some planets out from behind this. Delete on close. Close alarm. Looking good. The space crack is, yeah, it's going to completely rip us apart. <laughs> it's going to completely rip us apart. Let's see what else we've got here. I can't see those guys behind me. Those moons, I don't even know who you are. <laughs> nothing up there, nothing up there. Those other moons aren't even rezzing for us right now. So let's uh, go ahead. It's one hour out till we have this completely wacky. We need to start. Let's start. What? No, no, no. No, no, no. More lemon pledge. Control from there. Thank you. Let's put this puppy with the nukes retrograde so we don't use the crew and the plane wings. <laughs> we don't use the crew and the plane wings. What's up, Solo Asylum? There's been a breach in security. <laughs> You're pro DOS, dude, Adel. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> I do appreciate it. I think there's a lot of really cool stuff we could do with the whole academy thing. And I don't think that it can just be me doing the... There's a lot of talented streamers out there. I actually kind of scout and go around because I would definitely want other people helping me out. I've got a full curriculum track already developed. Just different topics and I'm... I'm not I'm not the best bass playing person, I'm not gonna lie. There are people that are a lot more talented in a lot of stuff that I do, and I am looking for people to help me out with some of the stuff, especially on the weekends when I won't be streaming. In other time zones as well. Definitely other time zones. See if we can't get uh, more of a little bit a little bit more of a European influence going on with some earlier streams, right? Build up some KSP European representation. Let's time warp this guys. I'm talking too much. I'm not lathing enough. We've only been going for 336 days. Wow, too lathe in under a year. That sounds like a uh, something we could advertise for the hotel. 40, 30, 20. Alarm clock will take care of it for me. A minute out. Look at lathe coming up. Look at lathe coming up. Wow. Wow, I want more time, actually. And wh who is this behind it? Who is behind lathe? Is that Tylo? Nice. That's awesome. Look, we can totally do this sort of thing. I'm going to point a retrograde. That's the safe way to do it. In fact, we can hide the lifter stage. We can hide the... Uh... There we go. Totally don't tell anybody we have an entire IP transfer stage. A big IP kicker behind her. <laughs> can I get Jewel in the picture? Ah! Ah! Nope, I can't. But that looks cool right there. Very cool. Debt screenshot. Yargnet. Ooh. Space Plane Academy with Yargnet Adel. Am I following Yargnet? I need to go to Yargnet's channel right now and make sure that I'm following Yargnet. I'm pretty sure I am. Is there some sort of joke in there that I don't know? <laughs> I may not know, guys, because I am really new here to the scene and I don't know a lot of people. Are we in Lathe's sphere of influence? Not yet. Look at our orbit! Six kilometers per second! How did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Six kilometers per second. We'll be going through less Athens for six kilometers per second. <laughs> it's only going to get faster as we get closer to her. Oh my gosh. It's like the lathe, channeling the lathe leprechaun. This, is, this may not be good, honestly. Alt F5. <laughs> lathe. <laughs> six km per second. <laughs> arrow cap. I have a feeling. Why won't it let me? Oh, in invalid characters. <laughs> Jeez, that slingshot past Jewel <laughs> did not treat us very well. <laughs> Six kilometers per second. Maybe we should arrow break to Jewel a little bit more. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. It's just a video game. <laughs> 
six kilometers per second. Oh, we're slowing down. Good, actually. Okay, Jewel is slowing us down a little bit. It's like, dust, come back. <laughs> that encounter velocity is intense. <laughs> so clearly, you don't use deadly reentry. <laughs> Not from a <laughs> Lath Impract Probe 01, says Zenocide. <laughs> oh my gosh. Dosh, just saved a comset that I forgot to deploy my solar panels on. Thanks to my Homer Transfer Texting. Dude, Sleepy! Congratulations on the successful mission. Where was it? Oh no, where was it? Where was it? No! Wait, I gotta do this. I gotta. Oh, my, my viewers are more important. No, that was Caboose. Commands. Bot commands. Okay, where's Caboose? Where's Caboose? Ask and you shall receive. There we go. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Da 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 da. Copy. Dude, this is a this is a freaking hardcore song for the Lathe encounter. But I am gonna do this. Add com. Good job. Okay. I'm gonna do that. There's that. Jet. And actually, we'll say good job, cadet. Good job, cadet. Chat that. Adcom. There you go. Adel. Uh, not Adel. Sorry, Adel. Caboose, if you're here, dude, that is totally you. Go for it. Oh, you typed it out for me? <laughs> I didn't even see you type it out for me, dude. I'm, like, so focused. You can hit that for me, though, Caboose. <laughs> Give a good job there, too. You can actually put variables in, too, right? Who was it? Who was it? Who was it? Sleepy! Give Sleepy a good job. And thank you for making that image for me, Caboose. Let's see here. No alarms on the list. That means we're a minute away. This is like a six minute song. I think we're gonna be good. I'm gonna turn this off. I'm actually gonna turn this off. Wait, what? That's lame. There you go. No. No. Seriously? There we go. Skype, go away. See if I can't get rid of some of these other things. I actually don't need to be broadcasting on TeamSpeak anymore. Disconnected. Skype, I swear, go away. No. Just get out of here. I hate applications that do that. Talk to me here. <laughs> Good job, K. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Solo Asylum sniped it. Yeah, that's okay. Good job, Cadet. <laughs> Here we are, this is Lathe Sphere of Influence. What? <laughs> Relative to Lathe, our orbit is 8.2 kilometers per second. <laughs> we may have to actually uh, angle it more towards radial than full retro. <laughs> Mort, thank you for coming out of lurking. To say that, we will actually give this a couple different tries. We're gonna F5 right here. We're gonna see. Let's go ahead and turn our trajectory mod on. I don't think that the trajectory mod is going to save us at all here. It tells me we're just going to go flying through the atmosphere so fast that it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh my gosh, trajectory mod isn't quite up to speed on Lathe, by the way. But, uh, you know, <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> That's what happens when you hit a planet at 90 degrees to its orbit. <laughs> Gonna need to arrow break like mad. I did an F5. Let's do another F5 for safety. It is not going to be able to tell us what's going on. What was the what was the subjection there? Um. Da -da 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 came in alert and just say maybe a good idea to angle it towards radial. Radial. So you want my front towards radial or my can towards radial? Because that would be coming in like that. I don't have enhanced, enhanced animal. I do have this. I can totally cheat. Hi res. Adel. Paging Adel. Look at that. That planet's coming up fast. <laughs> They're out there. Where's radial? Up there. No, that's radial in. That's radial out. So angle a little bit down, and we probably want to be entering with our plane in a very controllable situation, right? So let's do this. Adel, this one's for you, buddy. Ooh, look at that. The plane is not docked relative to our kicker stage very well. And you want me to come in a little bit radial, which would look like this. 
I mean, I don't even have to time warp this lathe pass, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, I wish... Could I control it from this docking port? That may be better, to control it from this docking port right here. Control from here. Outstanding. Alright. So that is a little bit radial. Nope, that's not radial to that. That's... Yeah, that's radial down there. Okay. I hope, I hope that's what you were telling me to do. <laughs> this is just... Whatever happens, this is going to be interesting. I think we're going so quickly towards Lathe. <laughs> we're going faster, too. <laughs> we're approaching Lathe so quickly that, uh... <laughs> we're already getting lift from the wings. Just from the space dust. <laughs> uh, this is us, Captain speaking. We're having a little problem on our entry sequence, so we may experience some slight turbulence and then explode. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude, Collection of Atoms. Thank you for hanging out, man. This is actually going to be, if you want to go, I'll probably do a highlight for this, so if you want to see what happens, I'll probably do a highlight. It may be a day or two, but we will see. Go deeper into the Atmo. That is why I saved. So what is my plan here? To slam on the brakes and see how much this actually breaks us. Radial based on your can. We'll use the lift against your speed, adjust towards retro prograde, based on if you need more or less vertical speed. Das, you're gonna go boom. We don't know what's gonna happen here. This is getting faster and faster. I see what you're saying. Use the lift against your speed, adjust towards retro prograde. Okay, gotcha. Makes sense. So you want me to kind of fly it in with the plane, right? Hmm. I see what you're saying. So basically fly the plane. You know something? If this guy totally explodes, we are going to fly this mission until we do it, even if we have to decouple the plane and put them into orbit separately. Right? So we will try it this way. Let's try it this way first. And I am going to totally try. It's good I don't have Dre or Far. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, yes. I see what you're saying, Mark. Um, I do see what you're saying. Let's try it this way, and then I will go and try that. I'm basically just going to try to lawn dart it, right? So for my first trick, I will attempt the lawn dart arrow break and see what happens. I did F5 for safety just in case. I think I had, that's quick save number five. Let's make sure what we got here. Jewel SOI. Where is lathe arrow break, honestly? Lathe arrow cap, there we go, all right. Craft, stay where you are. I'm gonna try to point straight this way. I think we're going to give Laith a new, uh... <laughs> we're going to give Laith a new Aurora down here. 8-bit <laughs> beetles? Really? This is kind of a... Even Nier would rip him apart. You guys aren't even kidding. Oh, use the plane's lift inverted to pull your AP down. We'll try that next time. We will try that next time. Let's see what we can get going here. I feel like I'm not nearly deep enough in the atmosphere, but let's see what happens. Let's see what happens with this. So let's go ahead and warp until it won't let us warp anymore. 20. That's 100. Wow! <laughs> let's see what happens here. This is going to be interesting. Alright, we're starting to arrow break. It is making the plane fly. What? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. 7,000, 6,000, 5,000. Nope, 6,000 still. We are just spinning around. I, it's pointed the plane into the flight. Now what? Are we coming back up? We are going back up. We still have 4,000. And something tells me that is still leaving late. Wow. Jeez, we are still arrow breaking like crazy. But the plane is basically wanting to fly through the atmosphere, something I did not expect at all. And now we're out of the atmosphere. I guarantee you that an orbit around Lathe, Lathe is not 4,000. So that is not an arrow capture at Lathe, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> that is totally not. That is actually going to crash us into Jewel, but that is not going to arrow capture us at Lathe. <laughs> No, we need to go even deeper into the atmosphere. Jeez, bury the needle. Here, let's look at this. Let's look at this. F3. Man, 
25.7. That's not too bad. Plus, we, we whipped him around a little bit. It looks like the plane is going to want to fly into it. The plane is going to want to fly into it. Oh my gosh. You meant an aeroplane change. An aeroplane change. <laughs> I didn't think you could do it in KSP. Alright guys, let's go ahead and Alt F9. Let's do it again. Lathe 6 km per second aero cap. We need to go even deeper into the atmosphere. Wow. Who knew? <laughs> in before, in too deep. There he goes in aside. You're not even kidding. There's Lathe again. We're going to do this again. And this time, we're actually going to control from here. <laughs> and we are going to fly it into Lathe. <laughs> Which I didn't expect that this whole thing... I thought that the entire plane would... Uh, tell basically the lawn dart behind it. But something about the stock aerodynamics. <laughs> Something about them stock aerodynamics. So there's that. And we will... This is actually what you told me to do, isn't it, Mort? You told me to do this, although I kind of feel like I should be flying the other way. So that I'm, my dorsal side is actually up towards the planet. The other thing I really think I need to do is fuel up the plane. <laughs> you probably just go straight down to the planet. Yeah, but I want to put this in orbit. My periaps is 19 right now, T-Game. 19. <laughs> so let us... <laughs> what is that orbit? What is that orbit even showing me? It's like... Alright, I need to focus on Lathe. Oh, we're still outside of Lathe's sphere of influence? Interesting. Alright, well that's okay. Do I still have that alarm up? No. That's weird. It's my Lathe's periaps. 19? Okay. Meh. All right, let's get 15. What do y'all think about 15? The plane ripping apart from so much lift force. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Steel Mage, we're being hosted by KSP TV still, I think. So, uh, how about 16? An army of claws. Interstellar is KSP the movie. All right, guys. Let's do this. We're going to do a bit of a correction, and we're actually going to burn... Yeah, that's what I wanted. I'm going to put this down to 15. And then I'm going to check it with the trajectory mod and see what the trajectory mod says. But it doesn't work if I'm not outside the sphere of influence, so I totally have to get in there first. So let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> this is 8 kilometers per second past lathe. Make a dorsal fin mod. <laughs> so it's got a... It's got like a little shark fin, dude. That would be awesome. I don't know how to do that either. I used to manage instructors who would teach kids in Blender back in the day, but I never actually learned that myself. 14.73. 14. 14.73. You want me to stay at 14.73? Washproof? I'll do it if you say so. 14.73. Am I still? Yes. I'll put it at 14.73. I assume that's what you were telling me. 74. Is that okay? <laughs> All right. Let's go. Let's get up to this. Two minutes. One minute. And there we go. Slowing it down, boss. <laughs> Steel Mage. Don't know. I'm new here. <laughs> totally new here. Totally new here. I have no clue what's going on with that trajectory drawing. Something about our uh, conics mode is different. Who knows? I didn't do it. All right, that looks a lot better. 14.7. <laughs> Let's consult the oracle, the atmospheric oracle. Oh, that says we're going to crash into the planet on the pole. Do you think it's right? I'm not sure if I think that's right or not. <laughs> that's what she... <laughs> Let's give this a try. Let's give it a try. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, get ready to display trajectories. Turn that off. Let's go ahead and alt F5. Lathe. Crash? Arrow crash? <laughs> oh, man. Question marks are not good characters. Period. They're not good characters. Lathe crash. Question mark? Nope. Man. How am I supposed to get creative with my save files? 
I'm really just trying to put the station into the uh, so polar orbit here. So there is Laith. We are flying <laughs> to Laith. <laughs> what? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense at all. And I'm just going to go ahead and fly it straight prograde like this and see how this works. Let's get up there till it stops us. Coming in at 8.3... 8.4, 8.5 kilometers per second. Don't try this at home. Don't try this in real life. Dark Drew, I just crashed into the moon because I wasn't paying attention. You know something? It's also usually because I wasn't. I was reading chat. Fueling the plane so that we could emergency toss it off. Let's see. Everybody is secretly waiting for me to explode. I don't doubt that. All right. Get me down towards Lathe until I can't time warp no more. All right, and let's see how this goes, y'all. Wow. <laughs> F2, print screen. Oh my goodness, print screen. F2 again. Look at us fly. Look at us fly. That's awesome. Still 6,000. <laughs> Apparently... All right, now it's changing again. The plane wants to fly this way. The plane wants to fly. It wants to fly. <laughs> fly, plane, fly. 14. Uh-oh. The trajectory mod may have been correct, y'all. The trajectory mod was totally correct. We are not going to escape Lathe. Dang it. So what was that? That was 14.73, I think. And that is not enough. There is an island that we can land on. Interesting. So 14.73 was enough. Isn't that what I set it to? I set it to whatever you said. 14.73. Okay. So the trajectory mod was okay. <laughs> We're still good. These guys have no clue what's about to happen to them. <laughs> Looks like an octopus surfing on an X-wing. <laughs> I do want to put this station into an arrow capture orbit, right? And we are definitely on a lathe. Good to know that you can bleed off that much. Guys, before we crash here... 43.9 G's. It's not good. Look at the docking port. The docking port. Here, chase cam. There we go. Look at the docking port. <laughs> We're hanging on by the magnets. We are hanging on by the magnets. Hope nobody's getting dizzy. I'm getting dizzy, honestly. <laughs> All right. So something like 16 would probably be better. I'm not exactly sure why we're flipping like this. Paste. The crew is paste. <laughs> Try 14.74. You want me to undock now? I'll do it. I am going to revert back out there because I do want to... Uh... I don't think I can catch it, honestly. Oh, my goodness. All right. Let's click on the docking port. Nope, that's control from here. <laughs> Them physics. We're almost going to hit the ground if I don't do this fast. Camera auto. Undock. Wait, wait, wait. Undock. Undock when I'm coming around the top. Now! For great safety! To the plane! <laughs> Throttle up! Engines engage. Pull up! Pull up! Too low. Too low. Too low. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Not cool. Not cool. Should have done that a lot sooner. <laughs> we probably could have saved it, honestly. We totally probably could have saved it. <laughs> All right. Alt F9. Lathe crash. I think I can fine tune it from right here, right? And we are going to flip over the other way. It wanted to fly the other way, apparently. Release the entire ship from the rest of the entire ship. <laughs> That's what we should have done. All right, y'all. That right there, 14.74, 14.73, not going to be better. <laughs> not going to be better. This right here is going to burn me. All right, so I can actually do a barrel roll. And we'll just let her rotate. <laughs> Turn that off. Check the chat. Do an aileron rotation. <laughs> Terrain. Pull up. Terrain. Pull up. <laughs> and this right here. <laughs> All we're doing is just guessing. Honestly, let's see. Let's give the trajectory mod a chance. That it told us we were going to crash and it wasn't lying. Hey, now. What's up, Amigo Gumball? <laughs> oh, 
my goodness gracious, y'all. Goodness gracious. Alright, now we're flying the way that both we need to go in on the planet. And it's going to allow us to raise that periaps. Let's go up. Until the atmospheric trajectories mod thinks that we are safe. Wow, 16 it even thinks isn't safe. 17, let's see if 17 is safe. Just give me a white line instead of a red line. Just have me bust through that orbit. This would definitely be simulator mode. And we are coming up on that pretty... Oh, look at that. That looks pretty good right there. Yes. All right, but we know from experience that on lathe we needed a lot more curve. Like that. Let's, let's just go ahead and connect the lines. That, <laughs> the orbital curly cue. Yes, this is what we're going to be doing, guys. We're going to capture it lathe like this. <laughs> ah, uh, yes. That lathean curly cue. <laughs> oh, my goodness. F2. Go back here. Atmospheric mod tells us that this is what we need. Let's see here. <laughs> Litho break. The F16 F says fly up for some reason. Fly up? It says fly up. Fly up. Really? <laughs> ground. Ground. <laughs> nice. Alright, we're gonna see how this goes. We're gonna see how this goes. Let's time warp. Let's not... I, sp I spent so much time just looking at the screen. Come on! Lathian arrow capture! There we go! Flying in world's most unlikely cargo plane. Here we go. <laughs> this thing is freaking falling apart. Talk to me about G's. No, if that's the throttle of weight, I'd have to go to the other thing. That's okay. Look at this thing. Print screen right there on lathe. <laughs> Going through the lathean atmosphere. Fly right, buddy. It's actually really changing my trajectory a lot. It's changing my orbital. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Do it, do it, <laughs> do it. You can do it. We are just rotating around all manner of uncontrollably. I really wish, ah, oh, we're coming up, we're coming up. Ah, oh, come on now. No, trajectory mod, no. I can save it, I can save it. Control from the probe core. Control from here, oh. All right, go here, all right, that's good. All right, don't do that. Get out of that atmosphere, man. Get out of that atmosphere. Wow. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Never gonna work. We still have vertical speed, but we're losing too much speed to the atmosphere, right? So we need to be a little bit higher. Oh, this is good. This is good. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. That is what I want. Come on, buddy, come on. Give me more opportunity to burn in the direction I need. That ain't it. That ain't the way that I need. No, 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 no. RCS. Mm, RCS, yeah. Burn straight up, dude. You can still get out of this. You can still get out of this. Yes, RCS, we've got that. Fly the plane. We've got that. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's creep. Now burn this way. You have to burn. You have to burn, burn, burn. Come on, show me white. Show me some white. Get me some white. Oh, I've got to go way up, but that's okay. And I'm in atmosphere. I'm wasting fuel here. Because these engines aren't as, aren't as efficient in atmosphere, right? That'll work. Now that I'm stable, I wonder if it's going to let me burn prograde. Nope, that's retrograde. No, 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 no. I wonder if it's going to let me burn Prograde, or I wonder if it's going to flip me around, because it'd be better to be burning Prograde here. <clears throat> yeah, this is probably not the uh, best mod, <coughs> or the best craft. Man, I don't need Dr. Pepper. We honestly, did anybody note what that was? That is really... <clears throat> oh my gosh. 
You're going in quickly. Emergency release. I mean, I know I can do it, right? I know that I can get up here if I'm actually in the game. Check this out, y'all. <laughs> These are my command inputs, if you didn't see them before. We're wasting so much fuel, though. I honestly want to do it one more time. Did anybody know what the periaps was? 18-something? Because we are... Oh, there we go! There we go. That's not right. Didn't the lathe atmosphere end at 57 or something? Ah, all right, you're right. I think Mitsu's right, honestly. <laughs> That's me trying to avoid... Guys, we know we could do it. Should we do it one more time? Should we do it one more time? Hmm. I don't remember what it was, but it did do the complete orbital curly cue. So if we go a little bit past the orbital curly cue, let's do it one more time. Let's not waste the, that fuel. And then we're going to land on lathe and we were going to call it a stream. So lathe crash, select, guest test and revise. 17, 17, 16.8. Are you guys like serious or are you just, uh, cause I thought we went all the way up to 18. That is not the way we want to go. So I apparently saved it after we did the flip. And I do believe that I can rotate this guy in compulsory physics. I mean, we're subjecting it to ridiculous forces in this arrow. Yeah, there you go. Wiggle on that docking port. All right. All right, so now we're good. And now we need to burn until we get m less curly Q, basically. Less curly Q. Just go for that same curly Q. We just, just wow. Okay. More curly Q like that, right? That is probably good. Then we, what was the uh, the stream must go on? <laughs> Let's try 18. Okay, I'll try 18. That's definitely a lot more, but even so, 17.5 maybe. Let's go for 17.5 and see how that works. Let's go faster, DOS. Let's get more of these things done. All right, we are definitely in fly mode. Flip me over, spin me around. Here we come into the atmosphere. Here we start arrow breaking. Arrow something, I don't even know. <laughs> how would you like for this? To be your view. <laughs> Even more. How would you like for this to be your view? Guys, is everything okay out there? Is everything okay? I'm not sure. Oh my gosh. Look at that. It actually looks like we came in... Uh... Wow. Our velocity vector is going all over the freaking map. Now we're doing a sweet arrow breaking roll. I guess that's what it would be called. I think the game has no clue what's going to happen here. We are going up. We're coming up out of that upper atmosphere. That's looking good, honestly. That is actually looking really good. Ah, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Just let it tumble. Who cares? <laughs> like a record? <laughs> what? You can get a better view of it. Yeah, I know. I was just playing around. So if what he was saying is if you double click on that, you can actually look out the window, right? Which kind of looks like that. Actually, let's take a screenshot like that. F2. Print screen. There's that Lathian atmosphere. We have a t a successfully accomplished an A. Oh, look at Jewel in the background. Print screen. We got the sun. We got Jewel. Stuff and things happening. That's pretty cool. There's Tylo out there. All right, y'all. Let's go back to our other camera. View mode. Nope, camera mode. F2. Let's go ahead and stop this nonsense. What was that? Am I still in the atmosphere? Wait a second. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Let's just go ahead and a physics warp on out of this atmosphere. Let's get this done. We also said we were going to do a... Not exactly polar, but that's okay. Do not want. Isn't that cool? That looks really great. That actually looks really great. Pure FX, dude. Thank you for the follow. This is like an extended Kerbal Space Academy session. 
We just did a ridiculous... What is going on here? Why are you... Why are you acting like that? Okay. We've got that at least. Why is it acting like this? Why is it leaning back and forth? We 